The use of depleted uranium munition by US-led forces during the war in Iraq is possibly causing cancer and genetic diseases among the local population. Such are the findings of a recent study by a group of researchers. And I'm now going to speak to the authors of the report, Professor Christopher Busby, Scientific Secretary of the European Committee on Radiation Risks, and Malak Hamdan, a British Iraqi scientist, both joining us there live in London. Thanks very much, both of you, for joining us here on RT. Uh, first to you, Professor Busby, before we discuss the, this possible link with uranium and uh, the current health problems being experienced there, can you please explain to us what is depleted uranium and, and why it could be so dangerous? Well, uranium is, uh, is a feedstock, as you know, for nuclear power. Um, but the isotope, it's, it consists basically of two, two important isotopes, uranium-238 and 235. There's a very small amount of 235 in natural uranium, uh, about one, 140th. Uh, but they have to refine it and remove the, 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 the U-235 um, in order to use the U-235, the, uh, the fissile element in nuclear power. And when they've done that, the waste that's left behind, which is much, uh, uh, has a much higher concentration of U-238, is called depleted uranium because it's depleted in the element in the isotope U-235. Uh, and this is, is being, essentially sorry, nuclear why, why waste. Is why is it being used then? Is it to make explosives more powerful? Um, well, it was originally used for knocking out tanks because it has tremendous kinetic energy and it can poke its way through a tank and destroy armor. But more recently, we think that uranium weapons are being used in a different form in order to knock down walls as, a, as a, some sort of thermobaric weapon. Well, uh, to you, Malak Hamdan there, also in London, uh, you've actually been working with doctors very closely in Fallujah. Can you describe to us how people are being possibly affected by this, uh, this uranium? I mean, what we do know, for the past year, I have been working with doctors, I've been working with paediatricians, gynaecologists, um, neurosurgeons, and they all have been giving um, indications, very strong indications, that there's been massive increases in cancers and birth defects. I mean, however, the, con the study that we have conducted recently um, has actually, has actually, does actually prove that there are massive increases in um, uh, in cancers, 38-fold increase in leukemia, 10-fold increase in breast cancers, um, and the the infant mortalities are also is, is staggering. Really, the unprecedented numbers of birth um, birth defects, and uh, and basically that is the situation. Well, surely then uh, we have a humanitarian disaster. Okay, just to ask you then, a humanitarian disaster. You're talking about these birth defects. Surely then the fact speaks for themselves. This this must be related to uranium because it's not happening elsewhere, is it? No, I mean, we cannot say, we cannot say, because obviously as scientists we cannot say, um, we have no real evidence that there is direct, it could be weapon systems, it could be a combination, we don't know, and this is what we are saying. We are pleading to the international community, to the scientific t community, but really to, to governments, is to actually do something about it. We need to set up an independent investigation. We can't just close our eyes because because this is happening and there is a whole new generation of very ill and disabled children and right. that is actually what we are facing. Okay, Professor Busby, in effect you're up against a brick wall here, aren't you? Because the World Health Organization, the website there, I've got it here, claims that depleted uranium has no detrimental effect on newborn babies. So in effect, they're not going to listen to you, are they? Well, they probably aren't going to listen to us, but I have to tell you that the science in this uh, area is completely um, being renewed at, at, at every minute. I mean, there, there's an enormous amount of new science which has been completely ignored by the World Health Organization and by the scientists who work for the governments who are associated with the use of these weapons. The science is changing. We now know that, that uranium binds very strongly to DNA and causes effects exactly at the DNA where you would expect it to uh, cause the kinds of health effects that we're finding, the cancers and the infant mortality and the congenital malformations, the leukemias, all of these things that were found at Hiroshima and Nagasaki, but actually here we find them to a much greater extent. So what can be done about it, Malak uh, Hamdan? You've been working with doctors there. Is it all too late or is there a way of tackling this health crisis in Fallujah at the moment? I mean, re realistically, I mean, look, what, what everybody, what the international community and what the listeners out there need to understand is that we desperately, they, these children desperately need um, an independent, in, independent investigation. And not just that, they need, these doctors need training. They need, the, they don't know how to handle these birth defects. There's complex cancers that they, they don't know where to start operating on. And that is really the first stages. There, there, we can make a difference and there is, and we can help, but 
number one, we need to acknowledge that there is a problem, and that's what we, everyone has to understand, is that the international community, governments are not, even the Iraqi authorities themselves do not acknowledge officially that there is a humanitarian disaster. Presumably, I, I mean, and, uh, uh, sorry, just back to Professor Busby, yes. Pre presumably this weapon is being used in Afghanistan at the moment, is it? I think we found evidence of the use of this weapon in Afghanistan, in Lebanon and in Gaza. And so uh, what we urgently need to do is to ask the U.S. military and the Israelis and all the other people using this weapon to come clean about what it is. Because if we know what it is, then maybe we can have some attempt to try and mitigate the problems that it's causing. And possibly the international community might decide to ban it. And that, is that really the aim of your report? For a complete well, the aim of our plan. report basically was just to back up, the, was to try and find out whether or if all the, 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 uh, the anecdotal evidence of these effects was real. I mean, that's all our report does. It's an epidemiological study, the first statistical epidemiological study that looks at, at, the, uh, at the children and the adults on the ground to see whether these effects are real. And we find that they are real. And in fact, not only are they real, they're very much worse than people are, uh, have thought. We are putting forward a very forceful case here. Just briefly, a final reaction from you before we get a reaction from Malak Hamdan. Are you in any way encouraged by any positive reaction to your report so far? Oh, we've had, huge, we've had a lot of reaction to our report, but, I, but, but at the moment there's been a deadly silence from the people who matter, from the World Health Organization, from the, the United States military, from the Israelis and from the British military. There's been a hushed silence. So what next, Malak Hamdan, finally? What next for you? After all, all the experience what next, that you've we just witnessed ca we carry on. We carry on with our research and we actually we are pleading to, the, if the governments won't do anything, we plead to the public to the US public, to the British public, to the European, to the Russian public and try to get their governments to recognise and do something about it. Very interesting to hear what you have to say. Thanks very much indeed both of you for joining us live here on RT. Professor Christopher Busby and Malak Hamdan there in London. Thank you very much.